one of the big concepts in evolutionary medicine, uh, probably uh, almost as important as trade-off, is the concept of mismatch. The key thing going on with mismatch is the fact that rates are different. Rates of different processes can be fast or slow. There are important consequences of the fact that we humans have constructed our own ecological niches. This has produced diseases of mismatch. There are different kinds of environmental change that are going on that produce mismatches. And some of these are affecting the microbiota in the human body, and that has knock-on consequences for our health and disease. So the underlying idea here is that adaptation is rarely precise and it is often lagging. So biology is often lagging behind environmental change because genetic change takes time. Selection is only producing a really good match of organisms to environment when it's acting for a long time in a stable environment in a population without much gene flow. Well, that doesn't happen very often. If the environment changes, some of the phenotypic states and some of the genetic variation that produces them will be mismatched until selection can catch up. Well, selection may never catch up. And so mismatch describes a situation in which there's both a poor fit of phenotype to environment, and it also means that selection is acting to improve that fit. So in a way, anytime a person uses the word mismatch, you can think, oh, it's an indication that natural selection is going on in that population. Now, what about relative rates? Cultural change has become a very potent source of mismatch because cultural change is so much more rapid than biological change. We continue to evolve biologically, but biological change is occurring on a, on a scale of hundreds of generations. Cultural change occurs on a scale of one generation or even less. Culture is likely to continue to outpace biology, and biology is likely to continue to struggle to keep up with it. So mismatch is going to remain an important element of our condition for the foreseeable future. Now humans have been constructing the world that they live in. We've done that with agriculture, urbanization, the medical system, air and water pollution, and with climate change. So there are, on many different scales, we've been changing our environment. This has resulted in less exposure to parasites, pathogens, and symbionts, more exposure to artificial light, profound changes in our diet, a more sedentary lifestyle, less temperature fluctuation, and much more salt, sugar, alcohol, tobacco, and other addictive drugs available in our environment. The environmental changes are complex, and their biological effects are usually mediated by genotype by environment interaction, so simple explanations are often going to mislead. Here are some of the mismatched diseases. I won't read through all of them. You can look them up in the book. These are things like acne, anxiety, asthma, bunions, tooth cavities, chronic constipation, coronary heart disease, Crohn's disease, diaper rash, emphysema, flat feet, gout, polycystic ovarian syndrome, scurvy, stomach ulcers. These are all important kinds of conditions associated with mismatch. You can think of that as being disevolution. Now, there are different kinds of environmental change, and just because we're constructing our environment, that doesn't mean we can predict the results, because many of the things that we do have surprising consequences. Individual decisions that we make accumulate to have population level consequences, and these population consequences are hard to anticipate. For example, the fact that we are generating climate change through our consumption and reproductive behavior was not at all clear, and that was a hard thing to anticipate. Emerging diseases are often unpleasant surprises that come from our habitat destruction and our population expansion. 
Our niche construction has particularly affected our own microbiota. So, what are some of the roles of the microbiota in human health? Our interactions depend in part on things going on in intestines, skin, upper respiratory tract, and genital ur urinary tract, where commensal microbiota are inducing the development of the immune and the gastrointestinal systems in, in, in infants. They're helping to maintain normal immune functions in all of these tissues. They, in our gut, they synthesize some of the vitamins that are essential. They mediate the digestion of fats and carbohydrates, so they have a role to play in obesity. And when their function is disrupted by modern environments, that is one of the major reasons that we become mismatched. So to summarize in this introduction, mismatch describes both a poor fit of organisms to the environment and selection that is acting to improve that fit. Many of the current mismatches result from the inability of biology to change as fast as culture changes. Recent changes include less exposure to microorganisms, more artificial light, better temperature controlled housing, profound changes in diet, less physical activity, and more exposure to addictive drugs. Mismatch might be contributing to at least 50 diseases and other health issues. And many of these issues are related to changes in the microbiota.